Hello, uh, this is a long overdue update. I have uh, had some upheavals at home, as just some of you might know, uh, which meant that I wasn't able to get as much work on this done as I would like to have. Um, I have, however, managed to do a fair bit, mostly in software, um, but also a little bit of hardware. Okay, this is a huge update, actually. I've got lots of things working now. And today, really, really happy. I've even managed to get the rev counter to work on the bike as well. I'll quickly go through some of the quick changes I've done now. I've created a new uh, filter, which I'll go over that in a little bit. I've got a pulse generator running at the moment. Um, I've done a lot of work with the software. Uh, I will go through the new menu stuff that I've got going. Um, it's not, again, it's nowhere near finished. Um, I'll explain again in a second. First things first, my rev counter is working but there is some problems with it i'll look the problem i have is it updates with each pulse so if you're running at a really low pulse you can see it flashes and does the update um this is something i will have to change the way it implements how it uh, updates the information but it works um even better news it works on the bike and trust me that was not easy to get working um, I've gone through several different versions of this filter uh, from the one that was built on the board to this new hacked in version um, I'll go through the details of what they look like in a minute but yes I am happy that works uh, software wise that is new in this version as you can see if you get whoop, that's, if you hit the red line uh, you get a flashy warning that's basically like a gear change warning um, and also that you're hitting the red light uh, this does seem pretty bright don't worry that will change nothing is final um, at the moment the software that's working for that will work for the, the speedo counter but I've got no sensor to deal with the pulses yet so that's something I'll have to do a fair bit later. Right, as I mentioned, I've done a lot of work in the software on this. Uh, one of the main areas I've been working a lot in is the menu system. I've got the next gen display talking with the main uh, processor a lot more now, and for the most part, I've got a lot of it working. Um, again, the main things like uh, the set wheel radius, state time, and all that are still on my to do list, but I have, however, got my uh, configure LEDs. I've also done like LED updates, um, LED animations for each update of the display as well. All of these now work, including the RPM signal. So let's say I wanted to change the speedo fill color. Uh, shows me what color it is. Uh, I can set and change the colors. And ideally, I still wish I could update this, update the LEDs as doing it, but it just proved to be too difficult. Um, I think it's a limitation of the next gen display as well as possibly some other issues but uh, this does work and as you can see I can set all my colors um, and they all correspond to the uh, menu now that is working and I'm really happy about that uh, so let's say okay this is the fill color so let's say I made that green it might not look very green to the camera there you go. Uh, done. That's saved. Um, okay, and the RPM. Let's make you. Let's make you purple for the fill color. Okay. Uh, speed peak dot. Well, it was green before, so let's make you blue. As you may notice, I've still got a few dodgy LEDs. My project's been bashed around a lot in a box lately and it's sadly now starting to fall apart. Anyway, it is working. Uh, let's change you and make you... that was about purple before. Let's make you green just to show that it works. Got a nice turquoise as well. Okay, done. Uh, also, let's change the 
be there. so you want to be down six thousand. Okay, done. 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 Yeah, there you go. All new colours. Oh wait. Hello. Does that make you green? Oh no, that is right, yes. And let's make that faster. Okay, it's very careful, isn't it? At the moment, I've got that just displayed as a debug. None of these uh, colour values currently save in EEPROM. Um, the plan is still to put in a memory chip uh, on the board and all the configuration data would be saved onto that, as well as things like the odometer and chip uh, times. But that's so way down the line. I'm just happy I've got a lot of this stuff working now. Um, next. One of the things I've been working a lot on as well is the fuel sender. I've created a wizard for it that you can go through all the different menus and set up your highs and your lows. Um, but it doesn't quite work. Software-wise, it is just about ready. Um, however, the problem I've got is that the menu is uh, reading a middle ground number. It's not actually reading the correct number. Um, it looks good, but it doesn't actually do the job. The reason why... Um, the actual circuit is essentially a voltage divider, um, but it doesn't seem to be dividing properly. I think maybe there might be some faulty uh, components. If not that, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and put it onto the new design. I am planning to do a new design of the board soon, and there will be some minor changes. Visually, not so much so, but... Um, I'm considering installing a Neve display over the next gen display and something that will work a little bit better and give me a better uh, quality of graphics on there. And uh, that requires a big, hefty amount of rework on the board. I'll try and also fix the um, the fuel sender with that, including integrating this new filter uh, onto the board. Uh, and number, let's just get that out of the way. Yes, so I'm at miles per gallon. I've got about 110 done. Okay, uh, and number tank size. I think mine is eight liters. Okay, and save. Okay, that information is now saved. However, it isn't saved. I said it's not actually got an EEPROM on there to save anything with, but it works. Uh, the, the, the menu works at least. Um, what's next? One of the other things I've been working on um, is the backlight uh, calibration. And the reason why, um, well, let's say if you've got your running lights on or your headlights on, um, these can be quite glaring. And uh, if it's dark, you don't want that to really like affect your night side uh, riding. So when the circuit detects that a, a light is on, um, there is currently a little bug there with it setting off the uh, flash. I'm not sure why. Um, it actually lowers the LED brightness uh, depending on which one's set. I believe that is uh, yeah the first one. That one is when the normal headlights are on, and when the high beams are on, it's that one. It's not very clear, but there is actually a difference between the brightness settings. And obviously those settings are in no way final. I need to actually test them in the real uh, world environment, and I'll probably set up some sort of debug that can manually tune those uh, numbers in, and then obviously hardwire them into the code uh, once that's complete. But yes, they, you know, they update and change. Which is nice. Um, one of the other things I've also uh, been tweaking is the, uh, you know, signals. So they've got them timed pretty well to the bike. I would show you all this on the bike if it wasn't for the fact that the weather's a little bit uh, unpredictable at the moment. It's raining today, and I don't want to get all my electronics wet. So um, yeah. Anyway, this does work, and I'm really quite happy about all that. Right. Next up is the 
filter. I have spent ages making this filter. I've gone through so many different designs and to get it to work. Uh, I've had a lot of Googling and uh, some I found looked like reasonable designs. Some were incredibly complex using multiple amplifiers and it was just, I wasn't going to do that. It was too much. Um, this one, however, now works. I've had it hacked onto the board and as you seen, uh, gave me a relatively decent, um, you know, Rev count. Um, it's based on this design, which I found on another car form. The one that they had on there wasn't perfect. It didn't work uh, on the base design. I had to make changes in order to get it to work. Um, it obviously is a bit hacked together. I had to put these cap uh, capacitors together because I didn't have one of the right value. But it works for now, and I will tidy that up later. The changes I made, um, I dropped this 1K resistor down to 870 ohms. Um, 1K was just dropping the voltage just a little bit too much for the um, the internal opto isolator to read properly. Um, also, I might end up dropping it down even further, uh, but at the moment I'm just keeping it as it is. I've added a capacitor, in this case three capacitors, uh, to around uh, 300 NF and uh, NF adds. I did start off with four that it was too much it was causing too much of a drop down on the curve and it wasn't giving me a good enough uh, high um the other major change that i did that they didn't have in this was to add a resistor on here i only found that out after looking at the um data sheet for this you're meant to add a little resistor between the voltage in and the tack oh, i'm just going to scrap that out because that was wrong there um voltage in and the tack and that amplified the signal to a really good clear square wave and the project can read it so now i'm happy that works i i really am relieved by that i spent ages and ages changing designs to get that to work and I really started to wonder if it, if it was ever going to make it work, at least with my bike, because it just didn't trust it. But yeah, that works, and now I'm really happy. Um, had it to the bike, and it worked. Well, yeah. So what's next for the project? Well, and it still needs to do some tweaking with the code. The rev counter isn't perfect. It updates with each uh, pulse, and that gives a, uh, a slow reading and a not very smooth reading at the lower rev uh, levels. Uh, that's something I can fix. It's, I'm quite happy with that at the moment. Um, the speedometer needs uh, the code probably tweaked for it, and obviously I need to build the hardware for that. Um, when I can do that, I really don't know. My situation still hasn't uh, been resolved yet. Um, and I hopefully will be back to some sort of normality in the next few weeks. Um, one of the big things I do want to do, though, I want to build a case. I want to get a 3D printer so I can build a case for this thing and make it look more like the finished product. It currently is just this whole messy uh, circuit board with wires hanging out everywhere. does look very pretty. Uh, it is something to do. The other major thing is I want to learn uh, KiCad and I'm going to be updating the display to an EVE display and I'm going to be needing to build some more boards and changing how my main board is designed as well to fill this. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to learn KiCad, transfer my schematics and designs over into it and then rebuild the board from there. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a process because I've had a little bit of a playing KiCad and it is uh, mind-bogglingly difficult to understand. But I'll get there. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and wasn't bored to tears. Um, I will continue working as much as I can on this project because I want to give you more updates. It's nice. And, uh, well, yeah, thank you again and goodbye.